baker, the grocer, the clerk, are secretly unhappy men because the butcher, the baker, the grocer, the clerk get paid for what they do but no applause. They gladly kiss their dreary jobs goodbye for anything theatrical and why. There's no business like show business, like no business I know. Everything about it is appealing. Everything the traffic will allow. Where do you get that special feeling when you are stealing that extra bow? There's no people like show people. They smile when they are low. Yesterday they told you you would not go far. That night you opened and there you are. Next day on your dressing room, they've hung the star. Let's go on with the show. Let's go on with the show. Can you greet a man who had such a great standing ovation last night? What'd you know about that? It's right here in Earl Wilson's column. No kid. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Mr. Williams. Hi, Louis. Coffee already and waiting. About that, eh? Hey, it's very nice. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you something that's not in Earl Wilson's column. Oh? Uh? Who do you suppose came to talk to me last night after the show? Who? Norman Cornell. Norman Cornell, the television producer? The same. Oh, yeah, I think he's so wonderful, Danny. He knows more about drama than any other producer. Yeah. He has such taste, such discrimination. Well, what do you want with you? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. But if you'd really like to know, he offered me a lead in a theater arts playhouse production. Theater arts oh. playhouse production? Oh, Danny! How about that? A saloon comic getting a break on a top prestige show in the air, huh? Oh, Louise, isn't that wonderful? It sure is! Oh, do you realize what that'll do for his career? Why, it'll put him right up there with all those top actors like John Gilgood, Alec Guinness, Laurence Olivier... And Archie Moore! <laughs> Now look, look, Kathy, before you get You know, it's wonderful working in a nightclub, but you uh, are capable of so uh, much uh, more. Darling, it's Doing me. a dramatic show for a man like Norman Cornell. Lover, Why, Norman, you could Norman. win an Emmy the first time out. An Emmy? Oh, and I don't know just where to put it. What? Put it right here in the center of the mantelpiece. Put it right here and make it the center of attraction, the main attraction, and push his old rowboat and put it out again. Oh, just a moment. Oh, oh, just a moment. With a light on it. Girl, yeah, please. You know, a green light would make some food in your put it down. The rowboat right where it is. <laughs> and wrap that Emmy up and send it back where it belongs. Send it back? Our Emmy? We won it fair and square. Oh. <laughs> I turned him down. I'm not going to do the part. Oh, Danny, you didn't. Sweetheart, leave me where I am, will you? I'm, I'm an entertainer, not an actor. Well, there are lots of entertainers who have made very fine actors. Look oh. at Ed Wynn and Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin. And Archie Moore! <laughs> <laughs> Look, kids. In a nightclub, I feel secure. I know what I'm doing. But if I do a dramatic play, especially on television with millions of people watching, I won't know what I'm doing. I will not feel secure. I'll have no self-confidence. Oh. And an actor with no confidence, honey, is kaput, period. Oh. End of sentence. No. End of discussion, lover. End of Emmy. Please answer the door. <laughs> You're so foolish. I'm you're not, not foolish at yes, all. I, I just know my limitations. Hi, Louise. Hi, Hi, everybody. Hi, Hello, Charlie. How are you, lad? Charlie, talk to Danny. Okay. Danny, <laughs> what do we talk about? <laughs> Tell him he's a stubborn mule. Danny, you're a stubborn mule. <laughs> I, why is he a stubborn mule? <laughs> he refuses to take advantage of his talent. He shouldn't be content to just work in your crumbing nightclub. 
Danny, you shouldn't be contented just to work on my crummy night. Wait a minute! <laughs> What do you mean he shouldn't be contented the way he should be? So contented, he should give milk. <laughs> well, I don't mean he shouldn't work in a nightclub, but Kathy, he's just, just leave him offers alone. a lead in a theater he knows arts playoff production, there. He and was he turns there. it down. I know, I know, and that's there. why I'm here. Know, Danny, please, listen enjoy. to me. You can't turn this down. It's too important for your career. Important for my career? And you know what it could do for you? What could it do for me? A lot of people will see you on television. Oh? And then they'll all want to see you in person in my club. <laughs> what if I flop in that TV show? Well, why should you flop? Why should I? It's a dramatic show. How do I know I can act? Oh, honey, of course you can act. You're always acting when you do your nightclub routines, oh. aren't you? Oh, darling, when you do this story about the man on the bus, honestly, you're so real that the audience can almost smell the gasoline fumes. Oh. Yeah. Hey, listen, and, and when you do, when you do the parrot story, it's so convincing you even begin to look like a parrot. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I mean uh, 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 a nice-looking parrot. <laughs> Better than looking like a pelican. <laughs> Keep punching, you'll hit yourself. Look, oh, Danny, what I'm trying to say, we're both trying to tell you that when you're in a club, you're acting. Yeah, I guess it's kind of acting. Yeah, but most important of all, you've got showmanship and anything else you can learn. Oh, but Charlie, how, how do you learn to act? Not really, no. Oh, honey, you could go to one of those acting schools. Acting school. Uh-huh. Hey, yeah. Acting school. Gee, you said a good thing. I got a whole month before that show goes on the air. Well, you could coach with someone like Sandy Meisner or Elise Strasberg. Honey, please, don't throw me in the deep water before I've learned to swim. Sandy Meisner, Lee Strasberg, are you kidding? Those are pros. I'd be nervous. Just come. Let's find one of those little guys. The village is loaded with them. They got just a few students. If I'd have more time. Get, get the phone book, will you, honey? Wait a minute, Kathy. Forget the phone book. Huh? What? What are you going to do? Pick any name out of the phone book? Why not? We're going to find somebody we don't know? What do you want to do? Wind up with some phony who's out to clip stage truck kids? Believe me, you don't need acting lessons. You're a good enough actor as you are. You really think so, Charlie? I'm sure. Thanks. Forget the phone book. <sighs> to be or not to be. <laughs> that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortunes or to take arms against the sea of troubles and by opposing end them. Kathy, get him the phone book. <laughs> Black is the night. Black is the earth. Black are the trees. Black is the sky. Black. Cut. <laughs> what can I do for you? Excuse me, I, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. Then why did you? <laughs> Could you be Maxim Gorsky? Who else would dare to be? <laughs> and what is it you want? Well, uh, I'm Danny Williams. What is a Danny Williams? <laughs> well, it's a, it's a nightclub entertainer. You mean you've never heard of Danny Williams? Plays the cop all the time? That's me. Well, anyway, I've, uh, I've uh, come here to get a few pointers in dramatic acting. Turn around. Pardon? Turn around. Gentlemen. With a clean shirt and a pressed suit and shiny shoes, you want to study acting? <laughs> yes, sir. You see, I've been offered the lead in a theater arts playhouse production. You? They offer the lead in the theater arts playhouse? Oh, the irony of it. And to me, they offer a razor blade commercial? <laughs> I don't know what you're all so surprised about. A lot of entertainers have made it in a dramatic field. Outside Archie Moore, name one. <laughs> Excuse me, I've heard that somewhere before. Uh, look, if you don't want me as a student... Wait, wait, don't be such a hasty pasty. <laughs> You want to be a student? Poof, you're a student. Uh, well, don't I have to enroll, sign an application or something? Naturally. It'll cost you $5 a lesson. 25 for six. 
Okay. In advance, please. There you are. Okay, buddy. Now, uh, when do I fill out the application? You just filled it out. <laughs> well, well, wait a minute. When, when do my lessons start? Your second lesson starts next Tuesday. Now, Rosie, I wanted to talk to you about something very important. Uh, excuse me. Well, well, what happened to the first lesson? You want to study? You study right away. I'll tell you what. I'll, uh, I'll give you a little improvisation. You'll try a little scene, and then uh, we'll criticize and analyze your performance. Uh, Rosie, you go down and you go up. Well, now, you've got to understand, I have nothing prepared, you see. I... In improvisation, there is no preparation. We'll make it up as we go along. I see. I'll help you out. Let's see. Oh. All right. You are at sea in a lifeboat. You've been adrift for 13 days. No food, no drink. You're exhausted. Panic stricken. Take it from there. <laughs> Sit down. You're rocking the boat. <laughs> Mr. Williams, are you in a rowboat or in a gymnasium? I'm in a rowboat. He is in a rowboat and I'm getting seasick. <laughs> All right, enough with the rowing. Let's start something else, improvise something else. Like what? Like there is a leak in the front of the boat. A leak in the front of the boat? Yeah, plug it up. Plug, it, plug up the leak. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Plug up the leak. What, what are you doing? Plugging up the leak. The front of the boat is this way. <laughs> What are you doing standing in the ocean? <laughs> Get back into the boat. Don't walk, swim. <laughs> all right, all right, enough already. Analysis period. Uh, Sheldon, you take it. Uh, Mr. Williams, such a superficial performance may suffice for uh, a nightclub audience. But to dare to call it acting? Well, now, just uh, Mr. Williams, you were in the middle of the ocean, starving. Why don't you at least try and catch a fish? Well, I... I, I can't I'll fish. tell you why. Oh. Just look at him and you can see why. With his pockets jangling full of money, he never felt hunger. Real hunger. Say, do you know what your big trouble is? You don't know what black is. Well, I love that is a very penetrating observation. And that, Mr. Williams, is why your performance was shallow and superficial. Tell me, was I as bad as all that? Well, to be perfectly honest, Mr. Williams, if you didn't already fill out the application, I would cancel the whole thing. But uh, we'll see what we can do. Thank you. Come back tomorrow, and I want you to bring something with you. What's that? A little talent. <laughs> and say that we're a malignant and turban Turk, be the Phoenician, and traduce the state I took by the throat and smote him thus. So die already? <laughs> Oh, good, huh? Mr. Williams, you're committing suicide. You're not playing tic-tac-toe on your tummy. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Gorski. Sorry, sorry. After two weeks, I would expect you to know how to kill yourself. Or at least you should want to. <laughs> it's pretty hard to kill yourself with a cardboard dagger. So let's make him happy. Let's give him a real dagger. <laughs> Mr. Williams. In the theater, a cardboard dagger becomes steel when the actor's imagination commands it. Now, try the scene once more and please employ a little of the psycho technique I have tried to teach you. Commence. Hey, maybe he'd be happier if we rattle a few dishes, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah sprinkle a little gin around the place and maybe uh, blow smoke in your face. <laughs> Mr. Williams, you already wasted $2.36 of your lesson. <laughs> Resume kindly. You mean kill myself again? <laughs> Please. And this time, put a little more life into your dying. <laughs> good afternoon, Mr. Williams. What's so good about it? Ooh, 
You look about as happy as a canary on a cat for. <laughs> canary has a much better chance. It can fly away. Well, do you think that you're doing too much working at the club all night long and, and going to this actor's school all day long? I don't know, Louise. Are you sure you're doing right? I don't know. I don't know, I said. Lately, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure of anything. And say that we're a malignant and turbaned Turk beat of Venetian. And produced the state. I took by the throat and smote him. Thus. So, Daddy, don't do it, please! <laughs> that can't be that bad. Oh, stop it. Stop being so. Give me that letter over. No! It's not a dagger. It's, I was just rehearsing a scene from a play. Oh, that's a relief. We oh, sure hate to lose you, Dad. Well, yeah. Well, thank you. So nice to know my babies are concerned about me. Yeah, who'd give us our allowance? <laughs> look, uh, why don't you just go play, huh? How's it going in that acting school, Dad? Now look, why don't you go have some milk and cookies or something? Go on, please. Okay. Look, don't bother well, me. <coughs> Who can that be? Oh, hi, hi, Dan. Charlie, hi. How you feeling? I feel great. Hello, Charlie. Hello, Kathy. Hey, Danny, there's something I meant to talk to you about. Yeah, Charlie, if you don't mind, I haven't got time to talk. You know, I got to get over to the school. I... Yeah, but this is very important. Well, you know, you know how your your routine, the opening monologue's been laying a, a big, big bomb for the past two weeks. All right, Charlie, I know. What did you come to rub it in? No, I came to ask you to fix it. I don't know how to fix it. You don't know how to? Well, if you don't know, nobody knows. Nobody, nobody knows the business like you. Yeah. That's what I thought, Charlie. What? But I just found out I don't know anything about our business. Nothing at all. If you don't believe me, ask Mr. Gorski. And he's got witnesses. A whole classroom full of them. Is this our Danny? No, oh, it's all my fault, Charlie. What? I wanted him to take acting lessons to build up his confidence, and every day he gets lower and lower. Charlie, maybe you and I should go over there and see what goes on in that class. No, no, Kathy, we gotta let him work it out for himself. We mustn't butt in. Oh, but he's getting so discouraged. It doesn't make any difference. We mustn't butt in. Yes, but he's losing faith in himself. Maybe one of these days he'll throw up his hands and quit the whole racket and leave you without a star. Kathy, I told you once, I'll tell you again. We gotta butt in. Come on. <laughs> took him by the throat and smote him thus. <laughs> cut, cut, cut. Oh, he's got to be joking. Mother. This is a dying scene? What? You're doing a dance. <laughs> Maybe we should put it to music and do it like this. <laughs> Toledo was I as bad as all that? Black is the night. Black is the earth. Oh, shut your big mouth, <laughs> Mr. Williams, will you please go back to the boat? You don't really mean that, do you? I, I have a feeling that I, I'm... What's the matter, Mr. Williams? You expire to be an actor, but you don't want to work for it? You want it to drop into your lap like a ripe peach? What do you oh, expect? No. Life has been too easy for our Mr. Williams. Just because little people laugh at your little jokes, you think you have talent. I wouldn't... Wow! Well, the patrons at the Copa aren't exactly little people, young man. And they're quite big people, and they feel I give them their money's worth. Their money's worth. How typical of the commercial hack. Money, the symbol of success. How easily some people are satisfied. I never said I was satisfied. Ah, oh, but you are. You, you, you're a parasite. That's what you are. Entertaining other parasites. Well, that's not really But true. never really rising to the challenge of true art. Well, well spoken. And furthermore, Mr. Now, Williams... Now, just a doggone moment. Kathy. Oh, Danny, what have I done to you? This okay. is all my fault. That's I wanted you to take acting lessons, but I did not want you to be insulted by a bunch of would-be intellectuals. Well, darling, this is no place for you. You mean it is no place for you. 
So will you kindly take me home before I forget that I'm a lady? Now, Kathy, sweetheart, Before listen. I forget that I'm a lady. I just forgot that I was a lady. Kathy, <laughs> lady. Oh, acting God. school, some acting school. There are a lot of good coaches and a lot of talented students in this city, but obviously not under this roof. All right, Clancy. You think you know so yeah. much. Why, what have you ever done in the theater except talk about it? Hey, and you dare to criticize my husband. It's all right, Jessie. My husband happens to be a star. Darling. He wasn't born a star. He worked hard for it, and he made it. And who are you, you frustrated, no-talent loafers, to judge him? Why, you couldn't even carry his sheet music. Sweetheart, it's all you, right. you, You're nothing but a bunch of 24-carat phonies. Right. Kathy, dear. Hey, that's great acting. <laughs> <laughs> That was for you. Every beat of my heart is for you. Every breath I'd take is for you. And if I could reach them, every star in the heavens would be for you. You'll never know how much I appreciate what you did for me yesterday and how much it told me. It's fantastic, the way you stood up to those phonies for me. Yeah, honey, this song fits you so well. It amazes me. It amazes me that such a beautiful woman like you could actually be in love with a loud-mouthed, ill-tempered, ugly mutt like me. Oh, my. <laughs> I love you, Kathy. I love you with all my heart. Oh, Danny, I, I've never seen you act like this before. I never took lessons before. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 